Woolworths came out with its full-year results today. The retailer's full-year headline earnings per share swung up over 30 percent to 214 cents as clothing and footwear sales in South Africa increased. I caught up with the company's CEO, Ian Moyer. Look, it's been a good year for us. They're a good um, set of results, um, and we're pleased. But we're we're far from complacent. You know, and, um, every 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 good result only lasts so long. We're now focused on the next year. Where sales grew 10%, questions being asked about your pricing power, you know, where, uh, whether or not you've reduced uh, margins in order to see that kind of sales volume uh, pushing through. We've got to obviously differentiate between the various departments within your business, but to what extent has your pricing power been eroded, if at all, to achieve the kind of sales volumes you have? No, not at all. Um, in fact, what we've seen is we've, we've t let's take the South African business. Our South African clothing and footwear business grew 11.5% and about 9.6% on a comparable basis. That's a very good result. So we're taking market share. And we're taking market share at the same time as our margins are going up. So our margins improved in that division by 3.7%. So that drove a, a huge improvement in, in profitability of that business and of the group as a whole. And that's not been done at the expense of sales. What we've done is we've got far more competitive on our sourcing, we've driven our suppliers harder, we're transferring that through to price and week in week out we make sure our goods are the best price they can possibly be and are in line or better than the competition. Run us through the management of inventory at the moment because in the past this was somewhat of a challenge where you know oversupply needed to be hived off at sale prices. Uh, run us through the kind of reworking of management in that line that we're seeing. We've made a big investment in, in both systems and people and process within the business and you know, good results like this, they don't happen overnight. They, have, they take three or four years to generate. So all of that amount of um, investment and time we've put into our systems is really paying off for us now. So our understanding um, of our customer is better. The segmentation within our store is better. The management of what profile of goods goes into what store is better. And all of that is systemized and hardwired into the system. So the buying, planning and allocation of our goods much more scientific than it, than it was previously. Um, and, you know, we've got really good teams doing doing a really great job with really good systems. And should, can we get better? Sure we can, but we're in a position where our inventories are clean, our, our sale is the most profitable sale we've ever had just because our inventories are so clean. Um, and so we're, we're pretty happy with our management of inventory, um, but also understanding that still more improvement to come. Then on the food side of things, one would assume that with food inflation rising as fast and as hard as it has, it's harder to push those costs through to the consumer, which is already under pressure. Earlier this week, we heard from a ShopRite, certainly one of the players that's experiencing challenge in that regard. Yeah, we've been, we've been very conscious of price within our, our foods division. So for us, within foods, it's really about getting the value, the value with the values right. So unbelievable value. We've moved into bulk. We've introduced the W Rewards program. We've got great promotional programs week in, week out. Our, you know, our pricing at, um, in, in, our, in our base goods, very, very good. We shop against our competition every week to make sure that we remain competitive. But at the same time, making sure that there's that Woolies different, there's new and innovative range is coming in all the time. So when you walk into the store, you see that great balance between innovation on the one hand and great pricing on the other. And as you can see from the results, it's allowing us to take market share. So with that being the case then, what kind of guidance could you give to the market in terms of return on equity and margins moving forward? Well, look, we, we, we think our margins, we will hold our margins in clothing um, and, and footwear. It's going to be difficult to do that. A lot of inflation coming out as a result of cotton price increases, inflation um, in uh, wage rates and so on in, in China. Um, but we're also improving our sourcing. We've opened a, a, a center in, in, in Shanghai that will allow us to better manage our goods. So we'll get a bit of margin improvement. We'll get margin improvements from the buyback of our franchise business and we'll use those margin improvements to make sure our pricing remains competitive so we'll maintain our margins. In foods, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be tough to maintain margin. We'll see how inflation comes through. We'll see the impact of the, cost, of the consumer on that. We'll make sure our prices are competitive. But we think we can hold our margins. And look, we gave guidance today on um, ROS in the long term. We will get to, to 6% in, in foods and we'll get to 17% in clothing. Let's take a look at that uh, franchise conversion because it's continuing. We've had uh, 23 operations bought at a cost of 250 million rand. Benefits you're deriving there exactly and how soon you see that starting to filter through to the bottom line? Um, okay, that was to the to the year end. We've actually bought some more after year end. So we've, we've, we're in the process of converting 54. 
um, and uh, you know we, we're going to get a, a return on investment of about 18 percent so we've spent 600 million rand on that we haven't in the results we've just announced there isn't a great deal um, of turnover from the conversion in there there's about 100 million but going forward we'll see much bigger figures and certainly we'll see a couple of margin points improvement from the conversion from wholesale to to franchise your share buyback program continues we've seen share buybacks uh, come in at 339 million rand and that for the financial year and uh, run us through that capital management program and how you determine at what level to stop buybacks because there's plenty of empirical evidence that indicates that companies buy back shares at the top of a cycle. Look, at the, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a constant equation, isn't it? You know, making sure that your balance sheet is well managed, um, making sure that you're not sitting on too much cash, you're using that cash efficiently. And if you look at the return on cash that we were getting, we were being criticised for holding too much cash on our balance sheet, um, and that means it's, it's not really an efficient and, and, posit and good enough return for us. Um, we took the decision um, to buy back our shares. We, we believe we bought them back where, you know, we can still, uh, the, it will still represent a very good return and certainly if you look at our return on on equity and our return on investment versus the return on we were, get, we're getting on cash buying our shares is a is a good investment